Welcome to Lecture Online, and here's our next example of a rolling object coming down an incline. There's friction between the rolling object being a solid disk and incline. The, the coefficient of friction is 0.4. The radius of the disk is 0.4 meters. The mass is 5 kilograms. And if the angle is inclined at 45 degrees, the question is what will be the acceleration of this disk? Now we're going to assume that the disk will not slip. It will actually roll down the hill. In the previous example, we had the very same parameters. We had the same example, same parameters, and we determined in the previous video that the maximum acceleration before it begins to slip is 5.54 meters per second squared. So we'll go ahead and calculate the acceleration. If it's greater than that, then we'll have to do it again because then the disk is actually slipping. We're going to assume that it's not going to slip and see what happens. All right, let's draw all the vectors, the force vectors on this disk. We have the force of gravity pulling straight down. That would be mg. And then we have the perpendicular component to the incline. And since this angle theta right here is the same as this angle theta right there, this becomes mg times the cosine of theta. Then this here will be the parallel component of the weight, will be mg times the sine of theta. And that's the force that's going to pull the disk down the incline. Of course, we still have the normal force the normal force of the incline pushing back, which is equal to mg cosine theta. That's uh, Newton's third law for every action. There's an equal and opposite reaction. And then there will be a force up the incline in this direction, force friction, which is equal to the normal force times mu. And since the normal force is mg cosine theta, the friction force will be mg cosine theta times mu. All right, so how do we solve this problem? Well, first of all, we use Newton's second law that tells us that M equals, uh, F equals ma. The net force pushing the disk down will cause the disk with mass m to accelerate the acceleration a. So for that, we need the equation F equals ma, or better yet, F net equals ma, because it's, after all, only the net force that will accelerate the disk. How do we find the net force? Well, the net force will be equal to mg sine theta, pulling it down the incline minus the friction force, which would be the force pushing in the opposite direction, and that will be equal to ma. All right, so what will, the, what will the friction force be? Well, it's mg cosine theta mu. But first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to find the torque that causes the wheel to rotate. And remember that the torque is equal to I times alpha. That is the rotational equivalent of Newton's second law, F equals ma. Instead of F, we use torque. Instead of mass, we use moment of inertia. And instead of the linear acceleration, we use the angular acceleration. And the torque, of course, is equal to the friction force times the radius of the wheel, because the torque will be equal to the force causing the rotation times the distance between the point of rotation and the line of action of the force, which in this case is the radius of the wheel. That will be equal to the moment of inertia of the wheel, which is one half m r squared. And alpha can be found by relating the linear acceleration a to the rotational acceleration r times alpha. So L alpha equals a divided by r. We substitute that in for the angular acceleration here, a divided by r. Then we can see that this r cancels out that r, and this r cancels out that r. And so the friction force, in this case, will be equal to 1 half ma squared. Again, assuming that the wheel is not slipping. If the wheel is slipping, we have a different problem. So that's the friction force. This can go in here. So we can then say that mg sine of theta minus the friction force, which is 1 half ma, equals ma on the other side. I can now move this to the other side, and we can write that mg sine of theta is equal to 3 halves ma, because 1 ma plus a half ma is 3 halves ma. Notice that the mass cancels out. Multiplying both sides by 2 thirds to get rid of the fraction here, rotating the equation around, we can say that a is equal to 2 thirds g sine theta, and therefore the acceleration is equal to 2 thirds times 9.8 meters per second squared times the sine of, in this case, 45 degrees. And let's see what this acceleration is. So we have 45, take the sine of that, times 9.8 times 2 divided by 3 equals, whoop, that wasn't correct. Let's try it again. 45, take the sine, 
times 9.8 times 2 divided by 3 equals, there we go, 4.62 meters per second squared. So A equals 4.62 meters per second squared. And notice that this is less than the acceleration, maximum acceleration permitted before slipping. So therefore, we, our assumption was correct. The disk will not slip and the acceleration will be 4.62 meters per second squared. All right, now, a little change to that. What if the coefficient of friction was less? What if it was maybe only 0.2 instead of 0.4? I think that's so small that the wheel would not rotate, that the wheel would actually slip because the friction force will then not be sufficient to keep up to the linear acceleration and the wheel would begin to slide. What would be the acceleration then if the wheel began to slide? So in the case that now we have mu uh, static equals 0 0.2, then what will happen is that friction force would be so small that it could not keep up the acceleration. If it cannot keep up the acceleration, then what would be the acceleration then? Well, the friction force in that case, so in the case mu sub s is equal to 0.2, then we need to go to the kinetic friction, whatever the kinetic friction is, and so let's say the mu sub kinetic is therefore equal to 0.15, that would be when the two objects were sliding over each other, which is what would happen, and so in that case, what we would get is we'd say, okay, the, the F net, equals mass times acceleration, so we get mg sine theta minus the friction force equals mass times acceleration. In that case, we have mg sine theta minus the friction force, which would be mg cosine theta times mu, so mg cosine theta times mu sub k, and that would be equal to ma, and then, of course, all the m's would cancel out. And A would be equal to this, so A would be equal to G sine theta minus G cosine theta times mu sub k. And then we plug in the values, so we say that it's 9.8 times the sine of 45 degrees minus 9.8 times the cosine of 45 degrees times 0 0.15. And then we'd get a different value for that, so let's see here. Uh, 45, uh, take the sine of that, times 9.8, times 0.85, and we get 5.89 meters per second square. So 5.89 meters per second square. And what happens then is, if the wheel is not rotating, if it's actually sliding, then it simply becomes like a block sliding down an incline and we will work out the problem exactly like we did before using Newton's second law and we can simply say that F net equals the force pulling the block down minus the friction force which in this case would always be mg cosine theta mu and that would be our new value for the acceleration. But if the wheel is actually rotating then we have to calculate the friction force caused by the rotation, by the, kinet the static friction between the, the uh, inclined plane and the rolling uh, disc. And then of course the friction force with the force required to give it enough torque to keep up to the acceleration down the incline. And that would be done of course with the, the black writing here. In this case, uh, the friction force would then be equal to 1 half ma and then we find the acceleration that way. So there's a nice little example. In the case of the black lettering, it's the wheel rolling with uh, not slipping. In the case of the purple lettering, you can see that's where the wheel would be slipping with a smaller coefficient of friction.